Right to God. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to stand up in reverence to the Lord. We're going to read the word of the Lord. We're going to read in Isaiah. We're going to open up in chapter 51. Isaiah 51. Book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 11. So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their hearts. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and singing shall flee away. Lord, we pray to you. And we ask you, Lord, for your blessing, for the revelation of the Lord. And we ask you that your word may be able to reach us with great depth to each heart tonight. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated.
Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to speak today about a spiritual gift the Lord has given. What is a spiritual gift? It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is not of our own will, it's not our desire, but before the service, we have a period of prayer, and the Lord has shown that in, in one of the manifestations of this spirit, that a person was going to come here, and the person was going to be here tonight, because of a deliverance that the Lord has uh, blessed her that person with. And the Lord was showing that this person could not remain in the place in which this person was. The Lord has looked upon that person with great mercy and brought that person here tonight. The Lord has shown that He has a deep love towards that, that person because in the vision, the Lord has shown that and the gift, the Lord is showing that this person, if that person continued in the place in which that person was, the person was going and was not going to survive, it was going to die, because that was not their their correct environment. It had a new place in order to for this person to live. And here's the place where you should live, where you have life. And we've just read a text in which we speak about this speak about a rescue that the Lord has given to his people. It was not only a person. Here the Lord is going to uh, said that he was going to rescue one person specifically, but in the time in which the prophet he described here, he it was described here on the text, he spoke of uh, desire of the Lord. And what was the desire of the Lord? The desire of the Lord was to take his people from an environment which was not theirs. It was not a place where they, the people of the Lord were going to survive. These people was not going to survive in foreign land. Even that in one of the Psalms it describes that. Uh, it was so a great their desire to uh, leave their the land. I they said I have the desire to praise the Lord. I like to express with my instruments a praise praising to the Lord. But how can I praise the Lord? How can I do that in a foreign land? A place that is not the place that our Lord has for us. And the place that the Lord has for our lives, for you who came here tonight, it's not the place that will lead you to death or sadness or anguish, like the Lord has shown here tonight. But it's a wonderful place that the Lord has for the church and for whoever of those who entered here tonight. The prophet reminded the people he was saying there was a pro promise from God the promise of our God of Israel is to take the people from the place in which they are they were taken away as slaves and bring these people back to the promised land and this promised land we know that the Bible describes it's a wonderful place. Revelations describes this. It's a place in which all the sadness is going to go away. We are not going to have tears on our eyes. Sadness cannot remain there in the hearts of those who accept it. Jesus as their Savior. It's a wonderful place that the Lord has for our lives. And the prophet was very persistent, saying, Do you remember the place where you came from? The rock from which you were cut out of. 
the place where you were and from a horrible place but our God removed us from that horrible place he plucked us from that place he placed it on the rock he placed on the rock there there is going to be joy and peace the Lord also has shown that what the prophet was describing to the people there he was saying we are going to be back as the people that is rescued by God and what is to be rescued by God how can someone be rescued by someone they can be taken away from the place where they were going to be condemned to death the, a person was dying there and somebody went there and rescued that person there are people there have this the means to do that but how is going to be the treatment of this person how is this person is going to be taken care of afterwards so now you're saved now you can walk freely whatever you want to go if you want to go back even to the same place where you were you have free will but the Lord does not do this with us our God rescues us the word says that we are, the word says that we are rescued by a wonderful God of a Jesus that loves us but Jesus rescued us and didn't um, abandon us there is a word that says this the Lord he passed by and saw that person falling down but he took care of the wounds of that person he brought that person to a shelter he paid someone to take care of this person I'm gonna leave some money but but I will come back because that's how the Lord does with us we are rescued not from just about anybody we are just we are rescued by a wonderful God by a Jesus called the Shepherd the one that bring us to green pastures the one who who dried up our tears the one who said one day for us go and see no more where are your accusers the one who looked upon us and before seeing our flaws looked at us with such a great love and gave us the right to eternal life placed us in a secure place and the Bible confirms this so the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion Zion speaks of the church speaks of eternity and they will come to Zion with singing with jubilation with everlasting joy so this happiness will have no end. It's an eternal happiness. It's not a happiness that of being saved and now, now I'm saved. Now I can do whatever I want with my life. No. Now I'm saved and I will be taken care of by a wonderful God. A Jesus that loves my life. That will give all the resources so I can continue to be. So I can continue having this uh, everlasting joy. And, on, and shall obtain joy and gladness with everlasting joy on their heads in our mind what is in our minds the one who governs us which is the Lord who is the owner of our lives who is that as pointing out for us the path he is the one who is going to give us all the means to be remain standing on his presence and it says here this joy is coming it will be with us but the sorrow and sign shall flee away and that's what the Lord wants for us 
and it, this is uh, this complete joy of the Lord upon us. It makes us understand that salvation not something that was that somebody came up with, something that, that is fleeting, but it is something that is eternal from God because we are going to feel this joy when sadness leaves our heart. You know why it's going to leave? Because there is not going to be place for it anymore. So sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Those are two things that there is no medication for. The brethren know that there is nobody that can uh, make a medication for sadness and sighing. Sore inside. You can uh, go to the pharmacy and, and, or to a doctor and say, Oh, can you give me a medication for my sadness to pass? Uh, can you give me a medication to remove the sign from me? Uh, he's going to give a medication for pain or something, but if you say that your soul is thirsty, he's going to stop writing because he's not going to have uh, the means to write on paper a medication that may bring you an eternal life. But Jesus has. Jesus has this joy. Eternal joy for us. He's going to... Uh, uh, sorrow and sign shall flee away from us. That's what God is going to make. Our lives here on earth is not going to be a sign of pain. But it's a soul. The soul thirst for the living God. And our, our soul has been has had its thirst quenched. The servants of the Lord, the Church of the Lord, we are soul has been has been plenished by the presence of God in our lives. This woman, when she entered into the presence of Jesus, when she touched the garments of Jesus, our pain, our sadness stopped. And the Lord just didn't disregard it. He said, who asked to touch me? I want to know who touched me. Because God wants to, to know who touched, who, God wants to know who is thirsty, who is feeling pain, who is feeling sad, who is sad. Because He is the joy of your soul. If, if you came here, He's not going to just disregard you. If somebody touched me, I'm not going to simply disregard a person. Jesus wanted to know who touched me because virtue came out of me. He wants to know who came here, why you came here. He's not going to simply disregard you. He's not going to rescue. No, uh, no. Give you. Uh, he's going to give you clothing and food, and now you take care of yourself. No, he's going to take care of us eternally, because this blessing is going to be eternal. It's going to be for our eternal life. That's the difference of the rescue from the Lord the ransom by the Lord and uh, there there is a people that rescue people yes there is a, a group that rescues people but today you're going to be rescued by the Lord and the vision showed this the spiritual gift was showing that the Lord brought you from whatever you were he plucked you from there it was not easy for you to be here tonight but Jesus brought you here to show you that he, he, he has Zion, a place to bring you to, which is a church, which is eternity, which is joy. And the Lord also shown that a couple came here and they were speaking amongst themselves, saying, we need, we need a blessing. We need to reconcile with God. We are walking away from God. We are losing the fellowship with God. And then they came here with this purpose, but here the Lord heard the desire of their hearts. And they're saying, I'm going to restore your fellowship. Your fellowship is going to be restored. Your marriage, the blessing, and the Lord also left a, a verse in Revelation 3, 5. Whoever is victorious will be dressed with white garments. And in no way, the Lord will remove that person's name from the book of life. In no way the Lord is going to allow you to continue in this situation in which you are. 
because he is in this place and he came here he was here ahead of you he was waiting for you Jesus here is, is here in this place and you can love, live this place without this blessing from God and we are going to hear now a song and this is a moment for you to place your life in the presence of God if I entered here tonight it was because God brought me here and he is a good shepherd and he takes care of my life right now say this to the Lord because he already heard your prayer he heard what you has to say to him Hallelujah. can stand up once again we're going to finish our service we we'll pray rest in service in the presence of the Lord Lord Jesus we're going to have our ask uh, brethren to make a prayer to adoration to of adoration to the Lord Lord we want to say that your presence is real amongst us we praise to your holy name because you gave your only begotten Son for the love of our lives. We praise the Lord for so great salvation. We praise your holy name, Lord. Because being called children of God, you praise you for this unconditional love. Because of everything that you have done for us. We want to say, Lord, that we love the Lord. 
We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise to you, Lord. We praise you for everything that you have done for us, for your church. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. My Father, we praise you. We give you praises, Lord, because you loved us first. Our lives. You found us when we needed you the most. It was a moment in which we were walking on a path without direction. You've been able to reach us because you are a God of power and love. Lord, we praise you because we want to continue serving you. There is no other way, God. And I'll accept our love and our adoration. The service of, of this night, we give it to you, Lord, so you may bring us home in peace. In your name we say that in the grace of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, the great and amazing love of our Father, and eternal fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we with all God's people now and forever. Amen. Amen, my brother. You may be seated. We are here. The service is finished, but we are going to leave a word with you. We don't uh, ask people to come to the front, but uh, the request is of the Holy Spirit in the book of Roma Romans 10, verse 9, 10 says the following. If you speak with your mouth and you confess the Lord Jesus in your heart, you believe that God resurrected, resurrected from the dead, you will be saved. If you, with your heart, you believe for just, justice and the mouth, you make confession for salvation. So this is an appeal on our part. It's an appeal that the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is making to your heart if you desire a greater blessing from God if you have been rescued you're here you want to be taking care of a wonderful God may you confess in your life to God with your heart and you believe that there is only one Savior now we can help you give you assistance as a church of the Lord the usher deacons and pastors are here we're going to pray for your life. If you desire, we're here at your disposal. Glory to God. If you, you can raise your hand, whatever you are, for the ushers to go towards you, the place where you are, to pray for your life.